Red Elk is an intertribal Native American medicine man. And he's coming up next. He's a self-described, uh, self-described a half-breed Native American from both the Blackfeet and the Shoshone nations, as well as part Irish and French. Member of the Hyoka, I believe it is, contrarian group of Native American lost boys, which he is one of the 12 inner of that group, one of the last nine members of the Red Web Society who are working to bring understanding to Earth. He is official keeper of the tunnels, official keeper of the pyramids, temporary caretaker of the flying red dragon drum, a very sacred uh, drum on the Hopi Nation, and the altar carrier of the nations. Red Elk is called uh, by both whites and full breeds as a bridge between the native people and all other religions including the atheists. Well, it's been a very long time since we've had Red Elk on. His last appearance involved, uh, without question, the best explanation we've ever had of what shadow people are and are not. You may recall we, uh, we had all sorts of people uh, sending in photographs during the course of the program when... Uh, a Red Elk was on, and Red Elk is uh, back tonight. That was an amazing program. Red Elk, it's good to have you back again. I, where are you physically located? Uh, between Ellensburg and Cleelum in eastern Washington, literally right alongside I-90. That's up in Mel's Hole country. It is, yes, and we've just recently been there Again? Again. Again, well, uh, I heard the there, I, I heard that there was a trek that took place by uh, some people up in that area, sort of looking for Mel's Hole, but that they didn't find it, and uh, they're, they've decided they're going to go back again with a, a more serious attempt. Is that correct? That is correct. They uh-huh. did find his property, but they did not... Uh, Wait a minute. They found Mel's property? Oh, you bet. Yes. Yeah, it, uh, the trailer, everything, and... Uh, there's a fence with strong warnings on it to keep out. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And I told him, that's it. I go no more. I go no closer. I've seen it. I've been there once, and they're crazy. <laughs> oh, really? And, oh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, your Area 51-type rigs, you know, those white rigs that would pop up and watch you? Oh, yes, yes. Ah, they came. Oh, a uh, government, uh... Well, call them... Call them government if you want. They're unmarked. And uh, uh, two of them, one blue, one white. And the guy in blue, thank you, uh, government, i say that to them. Why? What? Well, if it wasn't for them, it would have taken hours more to find his property. They parked right in front of the gate to make sure nobody went there. The gate that we've been going to, the place where I, you know, after many years yes. of not being there, uh, it, it seemed familiar. Well, it turns out that the yellow gate that I told you of, that's a back road into Mr. Uh, Waters' property. <laughs> and uh, they they came by and got everybody's license numbers, and he was sitting there with one of those palm things, I guess, uh, you know, kind of a palm computer. And uh, Yes. Well, anyway... Uh, uh, they, they noticed where he was parked across from, about a mile or a little more beyond where we've been looking. And uh, they get pictures of it. Uh, uh, if any anyone's interested, it would be on uh, uh, the, the Seattle cha- uh, SeattleChatClub.org. Uh-huh. And uh, really, well, anyway, again, thank you, Mr. Government. <laughs> Uh, so you you would say you've seen enough that you believe uh, Mel's story is uh, is true? Oh, you know, it, it, the only problem with Mel's story that I yes, I've seen enough to know that that's true. According to every description this gentleman has given out, old trailer, the whole bit. Uh, there seems to be a brand new, large, large building. Uh, on on that area with a great big barn, really a uh, few horses with a, a fence, and uh, you know fences a corral around the horses. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with corrals, Mr. Bell? Oh, yes, very familiar. This corral is three feet high. 
uh, three feet high. Mm hmm. Uh, gee, what are we corralling in there? Uh, it's a good picture from the air, Mr. Bell. <laughs> um, Red Elf, if this hole uh, is there, and by the way, Mel has uh, since described a second hole. Yes, I, 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 guess, I heard I, that. You, you know that, right? Yes. Uh, the stories that have gone, for example, with the second hole, uh, which is allegedly here in Nevada, are really, really incredible. I, I, I trust you've heard them. Uh, not the keeper of the tunnels or nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're the keeper of the tunnels. Um, how did how did the second story uh, hit you? And uh, do you think there might well be a second hole uh, here in my state? Uh, sir, every time you find one, you find a pair. They're all over the world. Kind of, we we call them the nostrils of our mother. The, nostrils, know, the nostrils of our mother. Of Earth, yeah. Ah, that one one good. discharges um, excessive, uh, oh, harmful if you want, or like like what would be um, viruses. You know, I'm not saying they are. It uh, it's just. Like you get a runny nose, one side runs, the other breathes. <laughs> and uh, so one side runs and the other breathes. Where you find one hole, you will always find another in a 25-mile radius. Uh, and yeah. again, they are not just uh, here and not just uh, down there in Nevada. And uh, they're, they're, they're literally all over the earth. And I guess we might as well go ahead and get the rest of it. You think these holes connect to an inner earth, correct? Uh, absolutely. And an an I, inner earth with inner worlds within that earth. Yes, but may I clarify that? Absolutely. Thank you. It, uh, people have got the impression it's a ball floating inside a ball, floating inside a ball, you know, on and on and on for five below us. Yes. The, the earth is dead solid all the way to its core with giant caves that decrease in size as it gets further and further towards its core. So if uh, deep whalers or well, what, diggers or whatever, you know, deep well dri uh, drillers, yeah. well, whatever they're going for, yeah. if they happen to be digging above one of these caves, these are enormous caves. And uh, especially the ones directly below us, they sometimes range six and eight, six hundred and eight hundred miles long, two and three hundred miles wide, Holy and God. and in some places, almost three miles high. All right. Here's something. So, I, here's something I had happened on my program that I would like to ask you about. Mm -hmm. I had a man call that. Uh, said, in essence, that all holes uh, in excess of 10,000 feet are classified. And uh, he said that uh, were he to give me any more information on the air, it would compromise U.S. security. So I said, fine, send me an email. He never did. Still, it sticks in my mind that, that he said that, and I wonder if you think there might be anything to that. Uh, from my information, it goes quite a bit above 10,000 feet. It, uh, from but, what but, I, but, at, but at some point, uh, Red Elk, uh, is there a, a government clampdown classification that occurs? Yes. Why? Nah, no. <laughs> no, it, uh, it, uh, no, I'll say no more, but yes. Well, I will say, I will say a little bit more. That, uh, you know, I talked about lizard people and stuff, and people really think I'm out of my tree. I know. It, uh, well, that's all right. It, hey, it's my tree. <laughs> it's your tree. It's you got that tree. right. Yeah. And uh, we do have uh, interaction with these beings as well as a number of other beings. And uh, these beings, the, the vast majority of them, um, are, are literally not of this planet. And uh, the lizard beings, the draconians, they themselves have colonized this planet eons ago. Uh, literally, uh, not, uh, not more than two, you know, than a blink, as far as time goes, uh, from when Lucifer came.
so they are um, colonized now from three of their own planets. And to them, this is home. It's just like uh, you white people, America's your home. You colonized it. And to the Indians, it's our home. We took it from you, right? Isn't that the well, way it went? sort of, kind of, yeah. Sort of, kind of? Sort of, kind of. Uh, well, uh, at least sort of, kind of. So, uh, I guess most people, they want to know about what's below us. They want to know about these creatures that are not really human, that we can't call human, um, uh, well, the origins of these creatures, I mean, have they always uh, been beneath our Earth? No, no. They came shortly after Lucifer went in. Well, that's, that's a long time. That's a long time. Lucifer's yeah. been down there for a while now, I think. And if you really want to know uh, their workings, which is, uh, first off, allow me to say they are humans. They just don't look human. Humans are people that have souls, all right? And all humans, no matter what planet they come from, no matter what they look like, are humans of their planet or soul bearers. And uh, so they're human. There are brothers and sisters, just, uh, just as you would be considered a brother or sister of each other because we look like two-legged. <laughs> uh, uh, so... So we have a, 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 a some sort of loose relationship to them? Very loose, yes. But it's going to get pretty strong here shortly. It's, it's already getting extremely strong. It, it's just a, they don't run around and uh, show their face to the general public. But uh, it will not be that way long. So there's about to be a connection between those below and those above. Oh, yes. And, uh, and others. Perhaps you would like to describe how that will occur. In other words, what will happen? Hold. Pretty interesting stuff. Mm. I cannot tell you how because I do not know how. I just know it is to be. Um, the interaction is going on every day. When you say soon then? Uh... Well, soon. Within 25 years. Well within 25 years. Okay. Well, that's still a while. Yeah, but I go from different times, so... Yes, it'd be, it would be quite a while, I guess, to, to we two legs of this earth. You, you understand, uh, of course, that uh, uh, the average, you know, person, when they think about uh, what you're talking about, that is the beginning of interaction with lizard people here on the surface, or I don't know, maybe we'd go to them. Either way, in, that kind of interaction would be really frightening. Well, again, uh, the frightening part is the fact that we are interacting every day uh, through shapeshifters and uh, half-breeds, and you're not aware of it. And uh, so far, the only way that I can, I can nail one down, really nail uh, one down, is having a photograph of that person. And uh, especially in the shapeshifting end of it, uh, a half breed. Okay, exactly. What would you look for? Well, it, uh, if you had a photograph, if uh, I have a photograph, it looks like somebody cut out a uh, uh, a cardboard cutting, like they do in the movie houses, showing Burt Reynolds or God knows who, and they stick it there in the auditorium. But uh, only a photograph reveals that. Um. By percentage of those uh, photographs that you get to see and those people you see casually or uh, not so casually, uh, how many do you see? I've only seen one in photo, and that's because I don't run around with a camera taking pictures of crowds. Uh-huh. It, uh, it just happens to be one of the half-breeds that I, I deal with, and uh, this guy's doing was doing pretty good. But uh, he would change without being aware that he's changed. You know, I wasn't aware. What, what do you mean was? You, you, you laid a past tense in there on me. Well, it, he, in, in his normal two-legged walk upon this earth, he's a half-breed. And you take a picture of this gentleman when he's in this mode. And? 
and he looks like any other picture of any other picture, you know. And uh, but they are so fast at shape shifting, so fast at pulling out the the uh, uh, I don't know the essence of the being himself, the the one that's half breed, and slipping in full bore. That uh, uh, like a walk in, what is called a walk in, and uh, it happens so quickly that. One minute, uh, the one that you know is there, and the next minute, you still think you know that that's that one, but without a photograph, you don't know. Well, have you but, ever have you ever uh, managed to get a photograph of in, of anybody in the middle of this person in the middle of person shape shifting? Well, first off, you're right; it's a person, but uh, no, oh, I haven't. Although I have seen them shape shift, I just haven't got a photo of it. In other words, somebody is sort of halfway here and halfway there. I don't know. Well, it's it's a strange deal, but uh, they're good at this, and uh, uh, there's a lot of interaction. You rub shoulders with them yourself, and I'm not aware of it. I'm sure of it because there's that many running around here. Here, well, I, I have no doubt of it. I rub shoulders. I'm sure with. You know, the way I talk about all this stuff on the air, my friend, I'm rubbing shoulders with uh, all kinds of things. I can feel it all around me, always have been. Well, you can feel one now, another nut on the air, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you described some awfully big areas underneath the earth. Yes. Uh, would there be a tactical advantage, uh, a, a, spir for our, a, spir for military? a spiritual advantage? What advantages would there be for us to get down into these areas and make contact? Well, like the long walkers that I spoke of before, uh, the advantage is escaping the width the width effect that is going to go on very soon. And uh, that uh, started, you know, not too long ago in the first place. Um, Everything, uh, the earth will flip or roll if you want. It will be in a three jerk, a jerk, mind you, uh, stage over a 10 month period. And uh, Sweden oh, yeah. will end up being the South Pole. And if you have a globe, put your finger where Sweden is, uh, well, put it above the South Pole. And you're Sweden. saying that's, that's where the North Pole is going? That is right. Yeah, well, that's quite a flip. Uh, Red Elk, hold on. We're at the bottom of the hour. <laughs> This is, uh, this is pretty far out for a lot of you, I know, and pretty far out for me, too. But you know something? There's a whole world of knowledge out there that we don't know a damn thing about. And that's what this man has studied uh, all his life. He knows things that are so alien to you and I that it sounds, uh, well, I know how it sounds. But before dismissing any of it, uh, I think you should listen very, very carefully. A lot is uh, is pretty wild and pretty pretty out there in the twilight zone, all right? But it's absolutely fascinating. He's the man who nailed down the shadow people for us. Tonight, we've got a lot to tackle. Stay right there. There's truly an entire world out there that uh, most don't understand. Many who listen to this program have sort of a hint. Uh, but basically, there's an entire world out there that's a separate world from the one that we understand and think we revolve in proficiently. That would be the world of uh, Red Elk. Here he is once again. Now, you're saying, you're saying that you have information that uh, is prompting you to come on the program tonight and talk about... Uh, you've said all... All of it, all of it, meaning, I guess, for us, for humans, is coming down. What what exactly do, do you mean? Well, it, uh, uh, the creator has got everything right on time. Oh. Everything is planned. Everything is working into his hands. Everything. People are worried about your weather shifts, your changes, and so on and so forth. There's quite, Which a, bit way to, there's hmm? quite a bit to worry about in that area, Red Elk. We well, just had a, We just had 84-mile-an-hour winds scream across the desert uh, Monday, and uh, there's destruction all over the place. The weather is is really turning on us, uh, but, but you say that's but only the beginning, eh? Oh, yes. It, it, to me, I, I believe everything started in 1996. Uh, it could have been earlier, it could have been later, but uh, that's where I put it. 
And it's just going to get worse, but understand it can be changed. It's only the greatest probability. All right, let's nail down what it is you're talking about. Uh, uh, well, all right. One word, Armageddon. Armageddon? Yes. The end of the world? Oh, no, no. The end of civilization. The world won't end no. for another somewhere until around the year 4,000. Well, the end of civilization, that's... As uh, we know it, yes. That's big enough. Uh, and when all is said and done, and we'll get to whatever is going to do this here, I'm sure, shortly, uh, after Armageddon, what will the world be? A mess. And it'll take 30 or 40 <laughs> years for those who survive it uh, to get back on their feet again. What They're, kind of... What, I'm asking what kind of world it will be. And I, mean, I understand mess, but I mean... Well... There, you'll be lucky to find two and a half miles of highway that isn't broken up. Uh, That'd be a mess, all right. Almost every tree, animal, plant, and water will be gone. Yeah, or poisoned. Yeah. But, uh, but this is one reason that I'm ordered to teach what I've been ordered to, so that the, the knowledge that the... Uh, medicine people and the, and the, the red people have considered it to be sacred uh, is put out so that the survivors will have that knowledge by learning now it will pass through some people will remember do you understand that a lot of people wouldn't want to live in a world like that they'd rather not be alive in, in the world you're describing I do and I also understand people too many people I uh, uh, you know, they talk to talk, but when it comes to death, they sit there and fight it left and right. And uh, you're going to have those that are going to fight it and make it through. Um, would it be a world that you would want to survive in? Yes. It gives you the opportunity to start... You, you, you might even be at home in that world. Uh, me? Yep, you. I'm afraid you're right. But for a lot of people, I mean, what you're describing is indeed the end of civilization. All right, now let's get down to what would cause the end of civilization as you see it uh, coming, all coming down. Well, it, it boils down to the warfare that is right now going on. Uh, it is between Lucifer and the Creator. It started all over again. Uh, and uh, the unholy four, which are uh, four different alien beings, including the the Draculian race, uh, the the so-called Greys, uh, we call them insect, or I call I like to call them bee people. Uh, a, gr a group, uh, the gargoyles on that uh, planet that's coming, that uh, that one that makes a big oval path. Gargoyles, and, uh, you mean... Uh, they look like gargoyles. Gargoyles. What you are obviously referring to is uh, the Tenth Planet. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, the Sitchin, the whole Sitchin story. Well, I don't know the whole story. All I know is that dang thing is loaded with bear. And with gargoyles. And, well, I mean gargoyles when I say bear. Yeah, they're, they're the worst things uh, in, in our uh, solar system. They're just unbelievable. You, you know, let me let me run up and hug a lizard compared to those son of a gun. So the lizards are really uh, uh, almost... Uh, almost uh, as bad as a gargoyle. Oh, oh, really? I thought you were oh, going to say yeah. they're nothing compared to the But I, I mean, uh, comparing the two, I'd rather hug a lizard. You'd rather hug a lizard? Yeah. <laughs> well, so then we're in trouble uh, beneath and above. Yes, so yes. to speak, uh, but right? uh, less trouble beneath than above. Well, what about uh, right here on the surface? Now you mentioned the ongoing troubles. We've got trouble in the Middle East. Powell is over there right now, uh, having essentially no success in stopping the fighting. The fighting is continuing, and you know, of course, the Bible uh, tells us that uh, when Arm Armageddon comes, it will come and begin in in that exact area. Of course, yes. Uh huh. Uh, they're going about that all wrong. But, uh, again, we are on the path of the greatest probability. But it is still yet a probability. It can be changed. And we can 
turn everything around. You and I and, and the poorest nation can be living in an utter paradise if we as a mass of people would put our mind together. And uh, Mr. Bell, you have done it a number of times on your show. Nothing at that level, Red Elk. Uh, I, I, have done, well, I have done experiments that suggest what you may be saying could be true. I, I'm, I don't know. Well, what you're doing, my friend, is, is quite scriptural, but, uh, you know, two or more together in my name. And I'm not going to, to say that the name of Christ, I, I mean, I'm saying it, but you've got to remember what that two-legged being was. He was love on two legs. Any two together in love, in, in pure love, you, you know, not lust love or anything like that, but caring love. Mm -hmm. then they can change much. And if we as a world could gather together in love, or the majority of us worldwide, not just the United States, I'm speaking across our planet, and but, okay, truly, okay, but, truly but, aim our love... You know what? I don't doubt that that is right, because then all hearts would change. But... And, and, and I also don't doubt that uh, mass consciousness uh, can do some things that are scaring me a little bit. Um, I'll admit to all of that even. But I don't see those hearts changing right now. In fact, uh, if you look at the present progression of events, there's more reason to believe that Armageddon... Uh, is just a tick away, Red Elk. It's uh, easier. It's, easy, it, it's it's much easier to believe that than it is that uh, all of these hearts uh, are going to change, and and the and the Palestinians are going to embrace the Israelis, and the Israelis are going to embrace all the Palestinians, even Yasser, and uh, all get together and be peace. Uh, if I were a betting man, uh, Red Elk, I don't think I'd be betting on that. Well, I would be right alongside you. This is why this is the greatest probability. This is why well, Armageddon looms. But, again, it can be changed. All right, but if it is not changed, which I'm sorry, well, pragmatically, then, pragmatically, pragmatically, I consider a much more uh, possible than what is going to happen. Well, Mr. Bell... You don't understand the Creator's uh, uh, plan, and I'll try to know sure real quick. Basically, Earth is a mouse trap in space. You and I are the cheese, huh. and all people of all the creations in planes, times, and dimensions, not parallel times, are coming here. They are at this very moment battling above and around us. Uh-huh. And uh, they are laying, they're battling over you and I. And we're the cheese. That's we're the cheese. We have all the DNA of every soul-bearing being from day one, long before the earth was born, from day one in our bloodline. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the unholy four are claiming us as theirs, and the other says, wait a minute, they've got our bloodline too. Some people don't want to go to war. But they have no choice. So literally everybody is being drawn to the cheese, to the trap. <laughs> well, I don't want to go to war, and yet uh, I feel it is almost inevitable. Unfortunately, you're correct, my friend. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, without intervention, without change, Red Elk, how close do you suppose we are? How, how much time is left if it goes all the wrong way? If it goes all the wrong way, That's right. again, I am overstretching because I am, I'm, I'm showing things, I'm told things, but I'm never given the time frame, ever. And uh, I, but I, I really, and I, I know this deep within my heart, I know, I mean, I'm way above knowing, I know that I'm correct, that uh, we are within the time frame of tw within 25 years. 25 well years. within. 25 years. Uh, that's not very long. Uh, and that doesn't give uh, people with children uh, a, a lot of hope. Well, 
if there's there's so much hope out there. Everybody, you know, I tell the truth, at least as I know it. By the way, I represent the inner guy. Hey, oh, guys, I'm tired. Inner Hayuka, uh society. I do not represent any American Indian tribe or nation at all. This is my society that I belong to. And under that, I want to make it clear, under that, this is why these things are being brought out. Well, you call yourself a contrarian, right? Well, I think you called me that. Well, I read. I, contrary, I, I yes. just, well, I just read your uh, your well, it's, introduction yeah, here. It's a con I don't even know what contrarian means, but I'm contrary. I'm a high <laughs> guy. <laughs> they, uh, you, you don't know what it, 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 a contrarian is. One uh, who is um, uh, uh, totally opposite to the status quo. One who. Well, okay. I, we call that just contrary. It. Uh, that extra one. Is, you yeah. got a contrary nature, huh? Oh, Lord, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, but uh, anyway, I'm doing this on orders, and I don't obey any man. I don't obey any man. I mean... You're doing the, this on whose orders? The Creator's. All 12 of us are doing it on the Creator's orders. There's only 12 oh. in our Hyoka. Only 12 of you? Yeah, there's hundreds of Hyoka, but there's only 12 on this planet that are in our Hyoka. Where are the other 11? Uh, one's Japan, one's South America, one's Africa, one's Arabia. And he isn't there yet, but he's on his way to be there in about uh, under two years. At, uh, let's see, one's in Europe somewhere, I can't remember. One's in Russia. Gee, I can't nail them all. But we all have our little our little areas of uh, uh, work. Are you, I, are, you in, North America. Yeah, are you in contact with uh, the other... Three. Three others? Yes. Huh. And uh, their view? If our view is identical. We're all trained identical. Okay. Uh, then I suppose the inevitability of this uh, appears now even greater. Listen, I'm, I want to ask you... Uh, about something that, uh, uh, perhaps coming up after the break, uh, that was brought up the other day on the program, and I don't know if it, what exactly what category it fits in, but I've begun to receive emails and communications from a whole lot of people in my audience about mirrors. No. Yes, I heard that. Oh, did you really? You heard something about that? Yes. Well, I, I heard a part of the program before I crashed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read you a uh, particularly interesting email. Uh, I've, I, I literally, I've, I've got hundreds of them now. It just, it, you know, it's one of those things that got brought up on the program, and apparently, there's something about a mirror that that gives one. I, I don't know what it does. I, you know, I really just don't know. I, I'll, I'll read you the story and, and let you see what you think. But uh, do you know mirrors to have? Uh, I know mirrors that trap <laughs> events. Trap events? Yes. Well, that's very interesting. Trap events. Yes. I know walls that trap events. Mountains, valleys that trap events. Not ghosts, just the past caught on film in a yeah. strange way. Yeah, actually, there's science to back you up. Uh, I'm told that one day when we know how to do it, we will be able to actually extract memory from things like windows. Uh, that you could actually download the memory of that window. Mr. Bell, a surprise to you. The medicine people do know how to do it. <laughs> really? Well, sir, it, uh, uh, with the creator in all things and with the ability to in tune yourself to the creator... You can talk to a mirror. Uh, you can talk to a road and say, where did the killer go? And the road's connected to another road and another road. Huh. And, and you can trace it like a bloodhound. So you can actually converse with these things? Well, well sure. Even, even the, the, the great one, the pale one, the two-legged love on, on two legs. Uh, he said the rocks could shout. He talked to a tree. It responded, you betcha, you betcha. And I, I can guarantee there's a lot of people that come to me, I take them on a tree trip, 
And afterwards, I take them outside, and the vast majority speak with trees. And so, it shakes them up. One the last time spoke with a stone. Uh, with, a, a, with a rock. Uh, a big one, yeah. It literally became a face and spoke to him. And he came in. Uh -huh. He came in. Well, he, <laughs> yeah, he sure, uh, that was an experience for that guy. Uh, now, <laughs> You you can even meditate sitting in front of a toilet seat. Can you imagine that? Uh, well, I uh, there are some to, things <laughs> there are there are some things perhaps better not imagine. <laughs> you know, for for safety here, let's get back to the rock part. <laughs> um, what did the rock say to this uh, person? I don't know. Uh, it was all on film. Uh, not not the uh, the people went out. At my orders, after this little exercise I teach, and uh, all of them went out. One, one had so many things chatting, he couldn't decide which one was chatting at him. So he got a lot of nothing in the long run. But uh, uh, I knew one would be speaking to a rock. I had no idea who. A lot of people, really, and I'm certainly included in that group, trust me, would want to know what a rock has to say, or even the... Actually, sir, you and I, the human race, are far dumber than a rock. Oh, a bag of rocks, huh? Uh, you <laughs> just one. <laughs> We're dumber than a, a rock. In what sense? Well, first off, you've got, you got to recall the rock, no matter its size. <laughs> uh, it breeds. Yes, really? Well, yes, really. It rocks and rolls and becomes smaller and smaller and becomes sand and then mixes with uh, organic material and becomes mud and dirt. And then along comes a volcano and it grows up again and it starts a whole process again. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the life of a rock, uh, <laughs> which is uh, no doubt where we have derived the expression, uh, life is a rock. And it was a cop. Or is it life is a bitch and then you die? Well, anyway. Back in the USA. From the kingdom of die. Actually, in song, I couldn't get much closer than Seattle. He's not in Seattle, of course. He's uh, closer to Mel's Hole, but it's as close as I can get. Good morning, everybody. Red Elk, who's a Native American contrarian. An interesting uh, turn of a phrase there, eh? Is my guest. And we're talking about talking to rocks uh, at the moment. We're going to get right back there, too. Stay right where you are. If you have ever in your life contemplated the owning, the possession of a a real astronomical telescope, then you probably thought, well, it's going to cost me much too much money. I, I, you know, it'd be nice to have one, but I can't afford it. Hey, uh, guess what? Yes, you can. The Bushnell 6-inch Voyager Astronomical Telescope, which is a gigantic telescope, can be yours for $299 plus shipping and handling. You pay that. So, you know, it's somewhere over 300 bucks, right? What a deal. This thing is gigantic. When it arrives, UPS will grunt it to your door. And you build this wood base. It takes about 20 minutes to put it together. Uh, easy. Not, not a big deal to put together. It wasn't for my wife. And if she can do it, you can do it. That doesn't mean if she can do it, I can do it. <laughs> At any rate, she did it. We put the telescope on, and oh, my God. The universe is out there. All of a sudden, it is yours, the rings of Saturn, you know, the dust storms that were going on on Mars, moons, uh, 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 our moon. You put it on our moon, you're down inside craters. Go look at this thing on the web. It's at forthenightsky.com. That's F-O-R, the night sky dot com, and you run that all together. Or call them and just order because they're almost gone. The number is 1-877-447-4847. Again, it's a toll-free number. Please write it down. I'm getting so many emails on this. The number is 1-877-447-4847. And they will answer any questions you have on this incredible almost done deal. And now... Priceline.com is the easiest commercial I do. 
I'll, I'll give it to you straight. I've been using it for years, and there's no way I'd use anything else. There's no way. And there's no way you should either. If it's an airfare, a hotel, a rental car, uh, you know, whatever, a vacation, anything, any of those categories, I'm talking about saving you 40 to, say, on hotels over 50%. 50%. They did a survey in which, uh, you know, New York, Chicago, and L.A., the biggest cities, where, where, where if you were to book a room, you, you'd be saving right around or over 50% by using Priceline. Now, here's the deal. Go everywhere. Who cares? Go to any travel agent you want. Go to other online sites, and then just before you're all done, go to Priceline.com. Name your own price. Within an hour, you'll get an email back. Usually it says yes. We accept, and you're saving 40, 50 percent, incredible amounts of money. So, this is a commercial. You don't, you shouldn't have to sell people on saving money, huh? You don't really have to. That's the deal. Go everywhere you want. When you're done, go to Priceline.com and save the real money. All right, I can't leave this rock thing for a moment. Uh, I do have something on mirrors, but I, I really. Uh, you know, of course, that when you begin talking about this kind of thing, even though uh, theoretical physicists are now beginning to say that things have memory and, and that memory one day will be retrieved, I mean, that's right at the very edge of our theoretical physics in in hard science right now, Red Elk. But here well, you are saying... Because they are white and they're just starting to learn. <laughs> because they're white and just starting to learn, huh? Yeah. Uh, um, you wouldn't think that a rock as a whole would have a lot to contribute. Now, some rocks perhaps more than others, depending on where they've been and what they've been doing, I guess. But I I'm serious. What could, what could be derived? What information, if you could communicate in some manner with a rock, could you possibly get? <laughs> You you speak as if I don't. If I could, no, I do. And I, I'm I, sorry, and I, I don't. I, to do. I don't mean to sound uh, okay, uh, okay, doubtful. But, I, I'm, I'm trying to ask right, an honest question here. What? Right, here, here's one instance. I was working on um, a construction site. I'd been ordered to. They had made a ditch, and I'd been ordered to dig out this rock. Okay. Well, dang, I had spent. I was in my second day, and it was not a big rock. It wasn't even half my size, you know. It, it was a little, I doubt if the thing weighed more than 40, 42 pounds. What do you weigh? Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, I'm down from 293 to 178. Well, so that would still be a pretty good size rock. You're under. Well, I'm talking size wise, not weight wise. <laughs> I always see, all right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, man, this thing was getting me ticked off, and boy, I I got so darn mad at it. I started talking to it, and and really lambasting the poor bugger. Why? Wait a minute. Why were you upset with the rock? You want to dig a rock that size for two days? Oh, absolutely not. No, neither oh, did so, I. So and I was words. out there in this heat. Oh. Digging this stupid thing. Oh. And and it was just hanging on to the earth. It was like it had arms. I I've got you. And uh, uh finally I I I really lambasted into it and the darn rock said I am holding the roots of that tree. And and you could get the idea of it pointing to that tree. So the rock told you that it was an important aspect of the tree. That is correct. So then what did you do? I said, to heck with you. I got a job to do, and by golly, let go. You're, so you're, you're coming out of there, or I'll blow you to bits. Just about. If I had the dynamite, I would have done it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh. But you know you know how uh, people are going to think of this, uh, Red Elk. Uh, I, I guess some of us, in the same sense, would talk to a rock like that. I mean, we might, but we we, we would Mr. not... Mr. Bell, all medicine people talk to things that you you think a piece yeah, but, of wood is a tree. Is, yeah, you're a living well, thing. Well, Red Oak, I talk to my car. You talk to I, your I, cat, I've got to be, I, But I've got to be honest with you. My car, at least as of yet, has not responded in, in any 
in any way I can discern. Well, someday, if you break down in that desert of yours... I did once, yes. Well, talk to talk to the part. Talk to the creator who's in all things. You, you know, actually, when it broke there. down, I did talk to it. I mean, I got, I got up on, uh, on the mountain, and the fuel pump uh, went. I mean, it was brand new, right? And the fuel pump went. And I, I said a lot of things, uh, probably most of them really unkind, uh, for several hours. Uh, my wife and I both did. In fact, she had words with it as well. But, it, it, but you see, it didn't answer. Well, I've had, I've, I've literally had the same problem with fuel pump, just uh, making a small pond under my truck, That's and no money to fix it, no way bad. to get it fixed. Very bad. So I, I walked around it and and prayed and spoke with it in prayer, knowing that I am praying to the God who is in all things, the creator who is in all things. So you, you prayed to or for your fuel pump? I did. And what happened? It stopped leaking. I drove all the way home on an empty tank, some 47 and a half miles. With well, now that empty, is... It was set empty on my, on my gauge. Very impressive. I got to my driveway. Yeah. I got out. I shut the door. Yeah. Bang. It started leaking again. And it was so dry, it only leaked the gasoline that was stuck in the uphill side running down mm. of gasoline of the fuel fuel line. Well, then maybe, you know, maybe it worked. Uh, in my case, I really only transmitted very negative things to it, uh, increasingly negative, actually, as the hours wore on, and, and finally this guy with this big flatbed thing comes along and uh, hikes it up and takes us to a place where I, I said further unkind things about it. To other people, in fact. Uh, anyway, it's a long story, but uh, it, it never worked out well. Next time, maybe I'll try a different approach with it. Well, you you know, Mr. Bell, there are no accidents. You learn from every aspect of your life if you've got a half a brain. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know about that either. Well, you should <laughs> learn. <laughs> you know, it, uh, bad but, things happen to people, and it's not until maybe years later that they realize... How, how they've grown. All right, I want to read you something, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I want you to digest this and tell me what we're dealing with. I'm going to do this. Uh, I think I'm going to do a program on this subject Friday. I have been receiving some of the most intriguing emails since the subject was broached uh, in, open, in an open line segment last week, uh, and I knew this was going to blow wide open. And, well, here, listen. Dear Mr. Bell, Recently, you talked briefly on your show about people who have had strange experiences with mirrors. Well, I'd like to share with you and your listeners something strange that's happened to me over the period of uh, several decades, actually, now. Some years ago, whenever I'd look in a mirror, I would see this relatively good-looking young man looking back at me. Now, I came to accept this as pretty close to reality. When I'd smile... He'd smile back. Kind of enjoyed looking at mirrors. I even looked forward to my encounters with this young man. After uh, some years, the young man disappeared. And suddenly one day I looked in the mirror and I saw this ugly old fat man staring back at me. Somewhere in the eyes I could see the vestiges of the younger man who used to inhabit the mirrors. But... This was and still is in no way any reflection, no pun intended, I guess, or any sort of reality. No matter what I have done, the young man refuses to resurface. I suspect he's been kidnapped by the shadow people or perhaps fallen into Mel's hole or maybe even led, uh, been led astray by the whisperings of Ramona's cat. <laughs> but <laughs> it's my cat, actually, uh... But it whispers to her. But but for some reason, he refuses to return. I've not mentioned this strange set of events to more than just my closest friends. The one I've uh, the ones I've dared share it with have suggested that maybe uh, my problem lies closer to home. One even suggested plastic surgery. Of course, you and I know the problem actually lies in the strange happenings inside my mirror. I thought maybe you should warn your listeners to watch for this kind of thing. It can ruin your day. Signed, Rick. Uh, now, there's a hell of a story, huh? Yes, especially signed, Rick. It sounded like some crazy old chick. 
<laughs> no. I'll be darned. No, but, and, 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 and... I can explain some of this, I think. Be my guest. Well, sir, I have gotten three... I, they call themselves phys physicists. It's yes. It's kind of a hard word for me to, to, to say. To okay. say uh, yes. And uh, they want me to train them. And uh, um, I, I was talking to one, and uh, we got on the... the uh, now, this is this will take just a bit. But uh, we got on, on to uh, talking about dimensions. And uh, what our Earth is doing, getting ready to flip, it, it's causing a vibration and stuff. But uh, nevertheless, and it's changing us. It's making us uh, uh, blurring our mind, okay? So that we're starting to see things that were unseeable, know things that were unknowable, except for people as myself and others in, in medicine and uh, in, 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 in deep wakai and or, or holy holiness. And uh, um, deep meditators, deep thinkers. And uh, this is what's helping cause it. But on, the, on this talk, I asked him, what do you see dimensions to look like? And he said, well, Mr. Reddock, it, uh, to, to us, or at least to me, like a ribbon. I said, this is good. I do, too. And I said, well, what about the ribbon? How many sides does it have? And he says, it's got two sides. And I laughed, and I said, come on, use that this is this thing brain. I said, you say two sides, think again. And he thought, and then it clicked, you know, and by golly, the up, the down, and each side of the ribbon. And that now this guy's improving, right? So now he's got four sides of the ribbon. And I said, great, now, think again. And he couldn't get it. There's the inside. Now, understand it. Look at it as a wide ribbon. That is wavering. He sees it as that. You know, wavering, weaving, but turning around about itself, tying itself in light knots, untying itself, and every time it rubs and twists and turns, it creates uh, holes or rippings of veils, if you want, where things become clearer that were never seen before. And uh, uh, because... Uh, well, is that what's going on with a mirror? That's right. That's just part of what's going on, Mr. Bell. Well, I am getting uh, I am getting a ton of reports about some really strange stories in mirrors now. This, uh, this sir, is just... Uh, you're just studying... You're, you're within the iceberg, but still on the edge. There's so many things that are going to be happening that... Uh, uh, through through this dimensional shift, through the mouse trap and the cheese, and all coming to it, it's all related. It's all metacreation, and it's all for uh, the great shift that's coming on our planet. When when people say to you that you're nuts, <laughs> what do you tell them? I I just I just kind of you know look at them in the eye and uh, put my finger to my lips and go. <laughs> That's that's uh, well. I don't know if that's a big uh, improvement. No, no. But you know, you, you just let them uh, continue with what you consider listen, to be their, their delusion, right? Well, they have their opinion. I have my opinion. I know rocks can talk. I have been helped by rocks. I've talked to water. Told not to drink. I am polluted. Go down the road on an unknown road. So in other words, you. In, in other words, there. in other words, you have had water warn you not just warn but actually audibly speak direct you to a better source yes oh, no, oh wait a minute you said audibly speak yes now do, well, do, audibly do you mean, in my head uh, okay audible. that's what i was going to ask oh. in, in other words it's not just the sound of the rushing water forming a voice mm -hmm. saying this is in your head it, it actually appears but, to you but i guarantee you you know it's not your thoughts Well, there's so much out there, Mister. I, I, you know, I know this is out on the edge of all things that we could even remotely consider possible. But, but again, it doesn't really get in a giant dispute with current theoretical physics. Uh, and there are a lot of things we we don't know, and it may well be that things can transmit information to human beings. I don't rule that out. 
Hey, but, there, but, but, there, but, Mr. Bill, there would be a lot of murders, a lot of missing people found, and or at least alive or dead. If people would just learn how, and it can be done. There, there was a program a few years back, one of these... Uh, all these wanted, you know, or mystery things, and uh, a lady had disappeared up here in this the state in eastern Washington. Her bones have called me for years. Her bones? Yes, she she was murdered. I I've seen how it happened. I I saw how she was lured there. I saw where she was buried. I know where she's at, and uh, uh, I know so much. Ed nailed me for the murder. My my wife has asked me over, uh, oh, at least at minimum three times, uh, honey, why don't you call the police and tell them where, where, where it's at? And I says, I don't want to get arrested, you know? All right, then, Red Elk, I'm going to read you something else. I, I was going to hold this for a future date, but I cannot resist. This appeared in a uh, Manila newspaper on Mar March, March 4th, uh, 2002, a Manila newspaper. The headline is, Mysterious Voice Leads to Mass Grave. A mysterious voice heard by a woman was said to have led authorities to a common grave in, in uh, the central Philippines, uh, a province which was allegedly used by communist guerrillas in its purging campaigns. Now listen, a woman in her 30s who introduced herself simply as a Ling Inde told reporters who visited the unmarked common gravesite at a remote village in uh, Maban, M-A-U-B-A-N town, that she had recently had paranormal experiences. Quote, I kept hearing a mysterious female voice calling for help so that she and her companion could rest in peace. The voice asked me not only to pray for their souls, but to search for their grave. She added, she said she sought the help of the military who sent soldiers, get this, sent soldiers to dig an area close to uh, this woman's house in the San Miguel district. Colonel Efren Oban, task force uh, commander, said they knew the area had been a communist rebel camp during the 1980s. Even though I suspected the grave was a mass burial site of the NPA, uh, New People's Army, I was still surprised when we discovered the piles of human skeletons, he says. The remains of five people thus far has been dug up, have been dug up from the uh, common grave. A separate pit contained belongings of what the military claimed were victims of communist executions. One of the skeletons was presumed to belong to a woman because of the pink stripes on the blouse uh, that was there and that was still intact. It appeared they were executed hastily. And, in fact, uh, they are just simply shocked at what this woman has led them to. But she says that a voice led her uh, to lead the military to this mass grave. That's a story from Manila. Uh, Red Elk... That sounds an awful lot like you what you were just talking about. Well, Mr. Bell, yes. It, uh, let me make a comment here. For all people that are listening, please. Uh, Christians, I, you know, I myself am a Christ follower, a Christian. That's what the word means. But, uh, um, but nevertheless, that, uh, that's neither here nor there. But the, the world of Christians say that uh, to talk to the dead is ungodly, unholy, and blah, That's you know, right. on and on. That's right. They and uh, But I say you you believe the word of God. Oh, yes, 100%. Absolutely. And I tell them flat out, I look them in the eyes, and I say, sir or ma'am, you are a liar. Because Christ said, follow me. And uh, what are you going to do about this one that says, follow me, do what I do, learn what I learn, and he's up there on the mountaintop talking to three dead guys. Red Elk, on that note, hold it right there. That is my guest, Red Elk. And we are talking of all kinds of uh, very strange things, which will continue if you'll stay right there. I'm Art Bell. 
we've had a giant coronal explosion on the sun, and uh, it's it, that baby's right uh, headed straight at Earth, as a matter of fact, impacting Earth now. And that has had an effect on my clocks here, my atomic clocks temporarily. We're, we're having uh, a real evap uh, evaporation, absorption uh, event going on. It's, it's kind of like evaporation in a way. <laughs> I suppose it's relative. And uh, so we've got that going on and a lot of other technical interesting things going on. And uh, by golly, here comes John from Wenatchee, Washington, who recalls my precognitive experience with... Something telling me that my car was going to be hit. You remember that? I've told you that story many times. I'm not going to go over it now. But he says, hey, Art, your car has talked to you. Who do you think it was who told you that it was going to be hit so long ago when you had that experience? It was your car. <laughs> could be. Could be. Uh, Red Elk, you're back on the air again. Okay. Let's wrap this little piece up. But uh, I'm not off of the uh, off of the subject that, uh, about your mirrors. Who actually we're right on it. We're weaving a story. And uh, this woman who heard this voice, she's probably Catholic. Most of, most of those over there are. Uh, that, yeah, that the majority of Filipinos are Catholic. Yes. Yeah, not all, but most. The majority. And, uh, yes. Uh, uh, you know, to come forth with this, uh, you know, it's scary to her. And and I I was mentioning what are you going to do with a, our 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 two legged love, you know, on our mountain top with uh, talking to three dead men. The fact is, and this goes to to the whole thing. The fact is, we're not to call up the dead. If they show up, what are you going to do about it? You understand? Oh yeah. And, yes. The the Christians have got it. Oh, uh, they they're burying themselves because of their. Stupidity, but uh, never. Boy, don't I make friends! But uh, nevertheless, uh, the mirror and things like that. All of this, the voices, the mirrors. Why would a mirror? You know, it, it's all this twisting and turning of the ribbon and the ripping of the veils and the vibration of the inner earth. Yes, but uh, uh, just out of, out, of, out of curiosity, Red Elk, why would a mirror be a doorway uh, to see or hear things? That you you cannot otherwise. What properties in a mirror? Beats me, Mister Bell. All I know is these things happen, and they're going to get far, far more brazier. There are going to be more and more of them, huh? Um, I almost said brazier. Uh, brazier. That's the word I'm looking for. Brazier. It, no yeah, on my website I speak of this. So it's uh. uh <laughs> Hey, get ready, folks. We're in for a change, and and you can't help it. You you either going to turn like a green wee a reed and 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 bend with what's happening, or stand there with your 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 back straight and bust off. There's a big change. We're in it. It's not coming. We're there. It's just getting stronger. Oh, well, I do believe that. Uh, we're in the middle of a change, all right, and the weather uh, appears to be leading the way. Um, you know, again, I go to uh, what's going to happen after all of this change occurs and what kind of world we're going to have and what kind of people are going to be the ones that are going to make it from here to there. I take it it's going to be a re relatively small percentage uh, compared if to the my six... my math is correct, sir, 10 million on this earth will be left. Yes, all right. Well, there are presently almost 6 billion people on the earth, if not by now more. So... If you're talking about a few million, maybe 10 million people surviving, that's almost everybody dying. Mm -hmm. But of those who do make it, Red Elk, dire as this prediction is, what, what kind of people are most likely to make it? Sir, every race, every creed, every color, and a mixed mash from rich to the poorest, it is, it is almost like throwing lots. And and snake eyes comes up out of four hundred dice at one time. So, you're, so then you're you're saying that there is no particular kind of spiritual person that's going to make it, and it's going to be a virtual Noah's Ark of a, a sample of almost everything on Earth. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Isn't and that only interesting? those that go through it and survive are those that the Creator has chosen. What will happen? You'll have thirty to forty years. 
of pure survival, deep survival, picking up a rock to hit another rock to make a knife, not not knowing how to, to nap it, you know, into a sharp edge, but just busting rock against rock to cut. Uh, people in time will, uh, uh, a big city will be 16 mud huts like in, in Africa, made up of, of mud and, and what little vegetation they can find. But that means that everything we now know, our big cities, our industrial might, our military might, our infrastructure, uh, you, you said roads would essentially be gone. You'd only find short portions of them. What is it, Red Elk? that could do this kind of incredible, just incredible, unbelievable damage. The uh, same thing, my brother, that, that took down uh, the city of Atlantis II, not one down there in the, the Bahamas. Uh, number one is in under ice in South Pole. The main uh, Atlantis was an island country stretching all the way across. Most underwater, it uh, now or under ice, and it will be Earthship or first time callers. Area code seven seven five seven two seven one two two two. And uh, <laughs> uh, guys, my lips are dry. I understand. But, take a uh, take uh, a good deep. That's right. Take wars. a good take a good deep breath and take a drink of water. I, I got a I got a good old Pepsi here. Do you mind if I take a sip? No. You hang go, on. You hang go on. Right go, ahead. go tell somebody about that great CC radio. I got two of them. I just wish I had modern ones. You have. Two CC Yeah, radios. I got one of them them uh, rock and roll wind ups. It looks like a great big old giant. That would be punch a box that would a be a, on the side. That would be a Beijing radio with a with a crank. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And so do the people that come. We go out into my lodges and just crank away, you know. And but it doesn't last quite as long as they claim. And so I do it between on commercial times, just to make sure I don't you know have it dead when you. I see. Well, you get into a hot, hot area, and the dang thing dies. You know. So. You've got to, you got to crank for about thirty seconds. Uh, yeah, and you crank like crazy. I think. <laughs> now the earlier models, you may have an early model. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 the new Super Beijing radio will give you. I can't you... afford it. I, uh, once a year, my wife and I, when income tax comes in, <laughs> we make an agreement on what we can buy and can't buy. And I got, <laughs> I got one of those a, a few years back. And then I got this one... Oh, a few years now. Well, there you are. You've got one of the very old models then. Yeah. The, the newer I models... I love the, one with the flashlight. Now, right? listen to me now. The newer models, yeah, with the, with the uh, LED light will last, in fact, 35 minutes for 30 seconds of cranking. That's how far the technology has it, come it since you bought matter. yours. It doesn't matter. It works. I know. It, oh, I know. It I know. Work? You've That's obviously it. been using it for years, so that tells people how long they last. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And then I got one of those that bring in all stations and I, I'm living in a little 8 by 26 foot camp trailer. That's home. And uh, I've got a, a great big expensive stereo thing here and I have to string wires across the ceiling. I still can't pick nothing up with the darn but I turn on that other one and Lord almighty I'm, I'm you know, a third of the way across the United States. Well this but, is two days in a row I've had unsolicited testimonials from my guests. Well you got this, another uh, one. Yeah, I tell okay, you, yeah, you yeah. might spend the loot but it is worth every penny. <laughs> there you but, go. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Red Oak, back, uh, back, if you don't mind, to the inner earth. It's something uh, people are really interested in. Uh, I have a question for you. If, Red Elk, if I have an opportunity to go to Mel's Hole, to go to this second hole uh, here in my state, uh, described by, uh, by Mel, should I go, or would it be dangerous? Well, uh, sir, it's only dangerous when the military owns it. <laughs> and That's it's only point. dangerous if you happen to fall into it. Yeah, well, well yeah, but short of all of that, short of, uh, I guess the military doesn't have this one yet. That's what I've heard, well, right? Given time, given time. But, but uh, I did hear, as I'm sure you heard, about this, this, this. Weird hole down in Nevada? Well, well, yes, this thing that fell into the hole. The dog that fell into the hole, or went into the hole, and what came out of that, this animal? Well, I, I, first off, uh, there's a magazine called Spectrum, S-P-E-C-T-R. I think I've heard of it, yes. Yes. They uh, interviewed me. 
I fell asleep three times reading my own interview. And uh, uh, <laughs> I did. But uh, boy, am I a mouthy guy. What did they interview you but, ab but anyway, about? But anyway, that, uh, oh, gee, everything, these tunnels and everything. And uh, I explained that. I explained how it cuts through very many parallel times, blowing out these strange coins. And uh, if a dog did come out, uh, why and how it, it managed to go through that from death to life. Uh, what Mr. Mills was talking about down in the new hole with this uh, poor sheep. To, by the way, the sheep did die that was of a, sheep, a heart right? attack. That's right. Uh, oh, of and, a heart attack. Yes, yes. Uh, the fear was so great, it couldn't take it. And what that beasty little thing was, I asked the inner queen, what was that all about? And she told me uh, a new name I'd never heard of called Rock Flyers. And they are a form of angels. Say say the name again, please. Rock flyers. They literally, uh, they literally live in stones, and they are a form of angels that she claims. Now I'm I'm only going by what she's told me. Uh, of, are the totems or the angels of the fairies and gnomes and stuff, and literally the same totems that our Indian people carry. They come from inner earth. Uh, a totem is not a totem pole. We're speaking a totem or a protector. See, we right. we didn't have the Jewish angels with wings and white white looks. We, you know, the Creator didn't leave anybody alone. He knew what we would could accept. And uh, so, the, anyway, what came? She said, "What Mr. Waters had, and it's not his name, but uh, anyway, what Mr. Waters said or happened." was a strange being coming up. She said, this is extremely rare. It happens just a few times in many, many centuries. This being, this... Uh, but Mr. whatever Bell, it is, yes, but whatever this was, uh, like almost like the movie Alien, uh, yes, emerged... It was, it was an angel, sir, that took the opportunity, a rock flyer angel, that took the opportunity to get up out of the inner earth to face Mr. Waters, to heal him, and then jump back in, or dive back in, and and huh. become the rock flyer again. It literally took on the opportunity, and it came out strange. But uh, and she claimed this is extremely rare, and she could not emphasize that strong enough. But she's she, not crazy. But she believed it. Well, this is the inner queen. She better darn well know it. You realize, to most people, how crazy this whole inner earth thing sounds. Well, look, Mr. Bell, inside the earth, where the lizards have, have claimed their realm, it is really, a, a, our, our, our own military should learn this. They walk down through the tunnels that connect their, their, their caves and homes in the caves. And it's really strange, their body heat or whatever lights the tunnel is about 20, 30 feet in front of them, and it goes out about 10 feet behind them. And even though you and I would, uh, you know, peek our head up and look at the tunnel, uh, it, you couldn't see anything. You're so far down, you, you'd poke your eye. Well, that, that would seem it. like an appropriate evolutionary path for a being that lived beneath the ground where there's not light as we understand it. Yeah, and, and it's a phosphorus green, mm. and you can read by it. And uh, these these uh, Draculian people, they, you got to remember, uh, they're very they're, they're just just because they look kind of stupid, uh, you know, scary. It uh, does not mean they're dumb. And by the way, they they are the ones that have tremendous amount of reason for these inserts these people are having. You know that they're getting uh, these these little pieces of glass like. Things that are put in ears and arms and whatnot. You're now referring to what we call implants, yes. Yeah, that's a word, yeah. Uh huh. And and you just don't realize what these people do, these these inner beings. They walk around on these on in, in these tunnels and if they get a hunger, a thirst, you know, if they want a, a shot of liquor, they have actual machinery. Like you and I would go to a motel and go and get a pop out of the machine. Yes. They would go down the hall 
go to a machine and they got little bells and whistles on it, little handles and all that jazz, all electronic. And they can see above Earth and spot the one or more who have these inserts and cause problems and they suck the energy, the fear, the, 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 uh, well, if it's a rape, they get the fear uh, of the woman being raped, for instance. Or if it's, if, if it's a bombing at the school. Man, I tell you, these people are causing more trouble than you people have any idea about. I don't doubt it. I mean, I mean we know, they, we they know. suck on this like, like you and I would suck on a straw with pop. Yeah, we know that there is uh, a, an evil uh, force that appears to be acting uh, upon certain people. Now, others would say, oh, no, 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 it's just the will of man. But really, in some cases, it's so far out and what is done is so impossibly awful and evil that it's almost, it, it's pretty easy to imagine there is an external force acting to make this happen. Well, the funny part about it, Mr. Bell, is the fact that these people, and they are people, they are soul bearers, these people believe, and they do, that they are God, big G. And as God, they can do anything they want. They do not believe in God. They do not believe in Lucifer. And yet they do not know that it is Lucifer who is pulling their chain. They are one of the first, these unholy four are one of the first of his um, uh, races takeover. You know, so race they, takeover? Are, they are, in modern parlance, uh, unwitting dupes for the devil. Yes, but they don't know it. They're so stupid, they just have no idea. And, and they, in, in their so-called godness, they do anything with you and me that they want. And, and, you know, there's an easy way to get rid of these darned inserts. And that is? Well, it, it's all mental. Everything that we in medicine people do uh, is, is all mental. You can, get, you can make them absorb into your skin and go out the drought or in sweat. You can literally make them turn into what would be... Well, they're not that size, but just as an example, is that the grape to a raisin. Is that the purpose of the sweat lodge? No, 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 no. Well, you said make them disappear in your sweat. Well, uh, take a leak. Go to, go to the oh. bathroom. <laughs> I mean, uh, 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 I was trying to be nice, you know. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm it, even it's sorry I asked. It's your body and goes up the drought. Oh, yeah, I thought we were talking and, about and sweat the, lodges. And, and you can change them from what... You know, grape to, to raisin, or you can do the cool one. You can change them to gold, and when they... Well, listen, I, I've, I've got to take a break here and go go get rid of a devil, and uh, we'll be right back. My guest is uh, Red Elk, and I am going to turn him over to you. This is your opportunity. Uh, you've heard some absolutely off-the-wall, wild stuff tonight, and you can either regard it that way or think that you're hearing something that you can relate to. It'll be interesting to see exactly what you think it really will. will. So uh, uh, coming up after the break, we're going to the phones with Red Elk. This should be something. I wish you would, you lady I thought I would take a Red Elk now and uh, put him on the telephone with some of you out there. How about that, Red Elk? Uh, could you wait just uh, a few short minutes? I'm in complete command. Yes, I can do whatever I want. Well, there are some things that I would like to put uh, put out to you. At uh, first, sir, uh, <laughs> I finally got to the bottom of the December show's mail where at least I could actually see the bottom of, of the, the last box. And dang, if you didn't play it again. <laughs> and uh, people are, I, I still haven't got done with December mail. <laughs> and people are wondering, and I'm getting some angry letters. And uh, my gosh almighty, we had to rent an outhouse because our little bathroom in this trailer is packed with mail. Both back seats are packed with mail. I pick up mail every day. Sir, I started that because I wanted to, to make this, this postmaster, you know, get off his duff and do something. And, uh, oh, boy, it worked. But talk about white man's revenge. <laughs> it sure backfired on me. 
Uh, well, you're saying, uh, in other words, that a million people wrote to you? Not a million, no, but I, uh, I, I have shaved my finger, the, the, the uh, thing, th six times now. Well, so do you want more mail, or do no, you... No, 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 no. No, you don't? Gosh, heaven, no, I got a website, <laughs> and, and I'm getting it on the website now, and I, I'm trying to answer the mail on the website. I see. It's not letting me get to the mail there, and I've got prisoners. The, the Hyokas that are not Indians that uh, are looking for help and I put them all aside so whenever I get a break I can write one letter hit my little button on this God given uh, um, um, computer and and Answer. send them every you know so all then, of them so one then, time so then do you want email I I don't want that either but I do have a website <laughs> and <laughs> what I want sir is I want my life back <laughs> You want your life back? Yeah, yeah, gee, I was an obscure nobody and now I'm I'm an unobscure nobody. So <laughs> Well, gee. Uh, well, it's, uh, a world of change here and everybody thinks of making money hand over fist. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Well, I don't know how you're making money. Well, I, I, I started putting these lessons out on 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 the uh, website uh, that people can buy it. I have written over 700 replies on how to levitate by hand. Yeah, I know and a by lot the way, of them. Out of all of those, uh, over 700, I counted them. I do have two people doing it. You have two people. Yes, who, but that's about who, average. Who You're after, only going to get who, about. Wait a minute. After your instructions, Red Elk, yes, two sir. people that are successfully levitating yes, off the ground. And her young daughter. The daughter's real good at it. She'll get up and tell her mom, Mom, I'm going to go fly now and take off. Levitate, you know, lift. Oh, I. I'm, and the, I'm with the you, mother, man. she's scaring everybody. I think she belongs to these line dancers, hillbilly dancing things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, they click, 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 jump, click, 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 jump. Yes. Well, she goes so high, it scares the hell out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and so. she wrote me, she's worried. What are we going to do about this thing? I said, well, that's why we don't do it in public, you idiot. Then, then <laughs> let me understand, then. You're, you're selling yeah. on, on your website lessons. Yeah, and, and, and I got Indians ticked off giving sacred knowledge and making money and watch out for this guy. He's a con. And all just because you're teaching people to levitate. Well, to them, it, you know, this is sacred stuff that I'm teaching. It's it's sacred. So they, they, sacred. as far as they're concerned, you should not be charging people. That's right. I, I That's see. Right. Well, and uh, you and know, yet it's all it, it, it's okay that uh, person's that got to live. The man gets paid when they come to him. Yeah. And That's well, a good I've point. got thousands coming to me, and they can't afford to come here, and they want to learn. I have never seen. I didn't know there were so many people that wanted to grow spiritually. And I'm only one man. I, I've asked for help from the medicine people and, the, and you know, shoot, no. They're going to let their ego, go, ego control them. They're going to let uh, the ways, if the world goes on as probable, so then you they're going to let the ways die out. And, and our survivors, you'll be lucky if they do survive just because of their stupid ego. So you probably don't want to give out your address so they can actually come visit you in oh, person. Oh, hey, they, they are. No, my address is, uh, <laughs> shoot, I don't care. No, don't give it out. Don't no, give it out. No, except for, for guy's sakes, that, uh, you ought to see my website. You ought to see the guest say, ooh, ooh, wee. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, um, but, okay, anything else you want to get out before phone calls? Yes, sir. Uh, inserts, I'll finish that. You can change them to love. And when these lizards dial in on you, they think they're sucking in a good drink, and it's like bile. And it just, oh, gosh, I got them oh, picked no. off at me. And uh, um, I, well, if anybody wants to, you know, many have asked me to come and teach. But these are all across the United States, many in each state. And I can't afford to get back to them and say, well, you get a hold of so-and-so, they want it too. I don't have their permission. But if people would like to set up chat clubs, get a gathering together where I can afford to drive there. I'm not going to fly there. I got stuff in my medicine bag. Then nobody gets in my medicine bag, damn it. Uh -huh. And I'm not going to let any of those airplane people get in it. Oh, that's right. That You would have to let them inspect your bag, wouldn't you? They, they ain't about to. I'm not going to go, so that means I drive. What do you think they would do if they inspected your bag, Red Elk? 
It doesn't matter, sir. I'm just curious. It I mean, well, I, I... just the fact that they would get in there and touch it is against all to me. Okay. You know, that is sacrilege. Okay. All right. A lot oh, of people okay. now listen. A lot of people want to talk to you. Okay. Real quick. All right. You ready? Any, no. No. A chat club, just anybody. And uh, uh, please, please think of this. All people, start envisioning what you want the seventh generation ahead to be like. Envision it. Look what the good you want your seventh grandchildren to be. Envision it now and work towards that goal. Now let's go. Most people can't even envision uh, where their own child's life is going, Red Elk, much less seven generations away. First time caller line, you're on the air with Red Elk. Hello. Aloha, Art. Aloha. And the same to you, Red Elk. I'm Kathleen from Kona. Uh, a little aside, I did get a reply from your December show, and thank you very much. Oh, there you go, Red Elk. See, there's somebody you communicated with. Well, believe me, I communicated with a lot. He did. Okay. Now, here was my question, though, Red Elk. I have a friend, and most recently she, in passing comment, told me about the lizard person that she had begun seeing, and that this lizard person was in the back of her car, but has become more prominent and, as she said, a part of her family. Now, I didn't know what to make of it, so I made nothing of it to her. But if there is an upside or a downside, and if there's anything that I can advise her, how would I go about that? First off, she has a lizard showing up like that to my sister because she has these dang inserts in her. <sighs> now she has welcomed the dang thing. Implants, in other words. Yeah. She has welcomed this dang thing. She has put herself in extreme danger. And anybody that is involved with her will be very much in danger in time. They're making themselves known more and more. They want full control of everyone on our surface. Make, make, no, make no doubt about that. Were these implants, when you say she welcomed them, I mean, were they something that were put there without her knowledge? As a child. Uh, and probably, you ask her about missing time. Many times, the, the, the majority of these people, I would say 100%, that have missing time have these implants. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Bell. <laughs> Is there anything I can do as her friend? Yes. What? Remember what I told you. To pray? Pray, is honey. Prayer works. All right, uh, let's try this. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, go ahead and give that a shot. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Red Elk, do you, I'll bet you know Pamela Stonebrook, don't you? Mm hmm it was Never a, heard of her. You never heard of her? No, sir. Okay, Pamela Stonebrook is somebody I initially interviewed some years ago, oh, Red, oh, Red Elk. The, the one with the painted hair? Uh, the, yes, Red Elk, the one with the painted hair, okay. who's, wait a minute, who's having an ongoing physical, sexual relationship with a lizard mm -hmm. and enjoying it every minute of it these so things, she claims yes uh -huh. i tell you these these things they're horny they're horny <laughs> yeah well that's what she said <laughs> oh is that right <laughs> yes it is uh, but, but uh, with what you just said about the lizard people it doesn't sound like you know she's hooking up with the right kind of lizard she, there is no right kind. Well, there you go. So, so you would say that she is doing a very, very dangerous thing. Yes, yes, she sure is courting fire, and, and, and I'm not talking hail on her head. And she is, oh, jeez. But then again, she's partly controlled. I'll bet you on it, Mister Bell. I can, look at, I can look at a person and see the inserts and point and touch it and say, "Have you been hurting here?" and well, gee, yeah, for many years. It's a danged insert in implants. Implants, yes. All yes, right. I see these things in uh, people's bodies. I understand. Wild card line, you're on the air with Red Elk. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, quest, uh, two questions I'd like to ask. Um, about three years ago, I had a dream where the uh, world was uh, 
it wasn't as so much engulfed as just a wall of flame went uh, around the planet. And the only people that survived were the ones that were in touch with the uh, uh, so-called animal side of them. What was... Would there be anything to that dream, or was it, it just would be a regular? True, they, it would be so true, sir. At, uh, the next time around, my friend, which is very shortly, mm. this world will come close to being destroyed, mostly by fire. And consider when the Earth flips, all the all the electrical wiring that's cracking around, live, starting fires, people with candles falling, starting fires, we got a mess ahead of us, and oh. and and those only those who are spiritually in tune with the Creator and all things, including nature. These are the ones that can make it. I'm not going to say they will. I say they can. Oh, and I'm the military that I'm running down into the holes. Uh, uh, my other question um, is: It possible that someone would be? Um like one of these half-breeds that you're talking about, because I've always felt deep down that I was what the uh, old Norse or the Vikings called the berserker, which means bear man in their language. And would they know it, or would it be possible that they'd be a half-breed without knowing it? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Could you be uh, a half-breed without being aware of it? Yes, and... Being a half breed and being aware of it and just being bewildered because this is crazy. Mm hmm. Yes, sir. Your answer is yes, it is quite possible. Well, again, you realize that there's a, there are a percentage of people out there, Red Elk, uh, and I can tell by looking at my computer screen, who understand what you're saying and do grasp what you're saying, believe me. And then there's another percentage that think you're crazy as a loon. Well, uh, well, sir, I, I say this. Believe not a word I say. Stick around. You'll find out. Or learn to check it. Okay. And then reject or accept. But don't believe anything I'm telling you. You make up your own mind. You're going to find out in the long run. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Red Elk. Hello. Hart? Yes. Um, Red Elk? Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing uh, the Native American wisdom with us. Well, I tell you, my brother, it's, uh, I thank you for that, but uh, the American natives, the other half, I'm a breed, remember. The other half aren't happy with me at all. Well, the, uh, a lot of medicine people say the same things that you've been saying. Um, but and I want to ask you about the hollow earth. Mm -hmm. uh, what about these, um, <clears throat> these lizards? I've, there, some of the UFO researchers say that they're from other planets. Yes, originally, and they still are. This is a colony. How can they be stopped? We, we, we all. A hey, lot of my friend, a lot of people have children. They want a wait, good future wait, for the for the uh, young hear generation. Me, hear me, hear me. How can these? How can they be stopped? Bad entities be stopped. My friend, there there is a way, and I'm a danger to them, and I'm in I'm in deep trouble, even Sharon. But uh, uh, in the long run. The creator is going to let the spring on the mousetrap stop him. That's why we are here. We volunteer, even though we don't know it. We volunteer to be cheese, bait. And everything is going to know, once again, there is one creator, and that creator is love. Okay. But in, the, in the meantime, there are ways to uh, uh, cool their, their, their thing, but to cool their, their um, uh, agenda and uh, uh, their full agenda, no, there's no way to stop that. Only the Creator will do that. Well, let's say, let's say that you're having an individual encounter with one of these creatures. Yeah. Uh, what could you do? Well, first off, sir, don't fear. That's why they're there, to make you fear. They get to suck that energy. It's steak on their sauce. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go, caller. He's basically saying the same thing uh, he said about uh, some of the shadow people. You'll recall that they they right on. They take the energy, they take the fear, and they feed on it. What about the grays? Are they different? The grays, sir. In the first place, these little ones that everybody's seeing, those are those are uh, um um. What is it when you when you make something out of another human being? What are the cones? 
And they're grown plants. They are not humans. They have no soul. They are literally made by the last of the true greys, which look like them, are, are taller, lankier, much skinnier, bigger head. And they have no soul. These are created no beings uh, created by... They're thinking plant beings, just as Sat. most of their crafts are made out of plants Sat. and can expand or extract. Come in a little at 16 feet, go out big at 200, 250 feet, full of our oars. That's... We wake in the news media and the, uh, the respectable people about what's going on. Oh, I don't think you're going to do that. They're, they're no more ready to accept a lot of what you've heard tonight than the man in the moon. Uh, bo uh, 80% aren't ready to accept what I'm saying. They're listening. I, I'd say that would be even a conservative figure, 80%. Believe me, a lot of people are not going to be willing to buy into this, but I, I know that a lot of others are. And personally, I'm not sure exactly what to believe myself. I'm really not. We'll be right back. Premier Radio Networks. It is indeed. My guest is Red Elk, and uh, you're either going to, I think, completely reject what he's saying and think he's loony as can be, or you're going to find some truth in what you're hearing. And despite uh, the manner in which it is uh, perhaps being presented to you, there's, uh, there's an obvious truth that some of you will know uh, as you hear it. I guess it just depends on how you take this sort of thing. I don't know. Fascinating man. Red Oak is absolutely a fascinating man. And uh, as you listen to him, there's a coherence to everything he says. Even though uh, individually at the macro level it may seem at times incoherent, it's not. There's a, there's a totality of coherence to it. If you're really listening, if you're dismissing it, then you're just going to miss it altogether. And Red, Red Elk would say, well, so what, I suppose. But there is, a, there is an overall coherence to it and a message that comes from it. We'll get right back to it. Once again, into the night with uh, Red Elk. So, Red Elk, uh, in terms of communication with you, what you would really like is for people to go to your website, right? Well, yes, and if they're going to write a note, uh, uh, keep it very short. If they're going to ask a question, please, one, it, 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 I'm a one-finger typer. I'm really cramped in this trailer, and I'm left-handed, and I have to keep my hand to the side because there's no room to to move. Uh, I, I've got stuff. I'm, I'm sitting on about a, a little two-and-a-half-foot area that's un, uncluttered, and my type, you know, the type things there. But uh, for those who are interested, I'm assuming you're going to ask me what it is. Well, I assume that your email is probably on your website, right? Oh, yes. But go ahead and give it. All right. My website is, uh, you know, the HTT right. thing. And uh, uh, then it's all small, all together, www.redelk. Again, all small together, www.redelk.com. Dot org. That's really easy. That's uh, R E D E L K dot org. Red Elk yeah, dot org. People make a mistake and type in calm. For I them. know. I, well, everything's calm, you know, so uh, I'm glad you're an org. Uh, next time, if there ever is, sir, at, you, at, your, at your command, if there is a next time, I would like to literally take about 10 minutes and people come on board with a uh, pen and pencil or a pencil and paper, and I will tell how to practice on-demand mental telepathy. We will break AT&T, and our government will not be able to trace masses of people's thoughts, and they won't be listening in. They just can't do it. They haven't got the manpower, and it's a matter okay. of practice. All right. I would love to give that to the people. All right. Let's plan that for next time. Now, yes. with, reference, with reference to levitation, that is a particular interest of mine, uh, Red Elk. You say you've taught a mother and daughter to levitate, right? Yes, sir. All right. What, are the, what do you think the chance is that this mother and or, or daughter would be willing to talk to me? Well, I, I could ask them. Would you That's please? The, the chance, sir, is totally up to them. Would you please? I would do so. 
Okay, ask them. You know how to get in contact with me. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I wrote your phone number down, and, hey, this trailer eats things, man. I don't, I don't know where it's at. Um, I, we're we're going to talk after. I'm going to give you that method, so your back's going to be good, bro. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go again. First time caller line, you're on the air with Red Elk. Hello. Hi, Art. Love you and love your show. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to talk to Red Elk. Uh, anybody who believes in the creator of love is just cool with me. Um, I was very much in agreement with Mr. Elk's message that we are presently in a very negative reality. I mean, we can figure this out just looking around us. And that this can be transformed into a positive reality of peace and love through prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, Art, you, you have a lot of guests on that have talked about parallel universes. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, if you, you hook into that idea, then you can understand that maybe possibly we can go in and out of the different realities. And I do believe that one way is through prayer. Um, and... Um, I, I know, Art, that you know, you're really reluctant and that you've done some of these mass prayer things where you've had some really weird experiences. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I'm not sure I'd call them mass prayer. I, I would call them uh, mass concentrations. Okay. Uh, but there was certainly prayer involved by many. Well, a lot of people do refer to prayers. It's basically when you're putting your attention on something. Mm -hmm. and, and most people, when you're doing prayers, you're, you're asking for something. No question. However... But you have to be careful. You're right when you said, you know, you have to be careful what you're asked for. You might mm -hmm. just well get it. Yes. But uh, that's where you can always add the little addendum and say, uh, in, in God's will, you know, if this is God's will. Because even Jesus Christ, when he was, you know, told he was to die on the cross for our sins, said, you know, if this is your will, take this cup from me. Mm -hmm. But um, otherwise, I will do your will. So we can always ask for a prayer, but we can always certainly respect and be humble enough to understand that it's always going to be God's will. Yes, but I think he does, you know, a lot of this reality is created by us. And you have talked about that too, Art, how, you know, uh, even um, Sean um, David Morton was talking to how we, our perceptions of reality um, come to be. And a lot of that karma of a country, karma of thought, karma of peoples in the past. That we make it all happen. Yeah, and so, you know, when you were even talking hard and saying things like, you know, I can't picture this, I can't picture this, so much of it is imagining. You have to imagine what's wonderful and what's good and what you understand to be good. And I'm not talking about just on a personal, selfish level, although it really ultimately is personal and selfish because I think ultimately we in our hearts and in our souls, we all want peace, we all want love, we want all, all want those good things. It's just when the politics and the individual greed gets in the way that it becomes distorted that's right so i don't know if mr l could um talk about if he has anything like a kind of a group prayer meeting i don't know if he does anything on the internet or um uh honey um, boy would i love to see it but uh, there is a problem hmm. when people have a group unity let's not call it prayer group okay. unity where two or more gather together you know what they mean in heart. Mm -hmm. If uh, uh, if it's done on a regular basis, it becomes rote and therefore useless. Mm -hmm. It had it. It should be done, and it needs to be done. We need to close these ozone holes, and it can be done by mind caring about our environment, or about our very lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, many works can be done. It's more than just envisioning Mr. Limbell getting, getting better in his hearing and what a miracle that was. And, uh, uh, or Mr. Mr. Bell with his back, things like that. It's, uh, we, we can do far greater. We can help heal our own planet. Mm -hmm. and, and we, my sister, can also uh, change our greatest probable even though it doesn't look like it's possible, look at what one man did for the whole planet. Oh, yes. And, uh, gee, really? It always starts with one soul, doesn't it? Hmm? It, there could be great power. It always starts with one person. Yes, and it needs total love, commitment, a, a great desire, a, a humbleness of heart, and a great want, a hunger. Mm -hmm. Those people that have that and can unite can do miracles beyond miracles. Because that's the way the Creator has made us and wants us to be. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for Mr. Bell and your information, I would like to talk about 
a very sacred thing, probably one of the greatest secrets that medicine people know. The fact is we live, we are a dream, the creator's dream. We live because he does not sleep. Now, everybody knows or most know about lucid dreaming where you're being chased by something, but you're in a half-sleep state, and you can turn around and say, why are you chasing me, you know, and then find out what it's all about. What you don't know is that we are living a lucid dream, not just dreaming occasionally at night. Hmm. This whole thing is a dream. Row, row, row your boat. That's like, uh, that's kind of like The Matrix, the movie, The the Matrix. Yeah, I hear about that movie, and I, someday I'll rent that thing. You probably should it's, rent it's, it and watch it. It's, it's that concept. Well, sir, we can work the dream. That's where we in medicine, men and women, good and bad, sorcery or not, we work the dream. We can make things happen because we can work the dream. We know this life that you call reality is lucid dream. Okay. Uh, Wild Card Line, you're on the air with Red Elk. Good morning. Uh, yeah, thank you, Art, for taking my call. Very this welcome. Is Levi. I'm on my way to Oklahoma City. Yes, uh, hello, Mr. Red Elk. Hello, my friend. Uh, I have a th- I've come across a theory that I put together as I went down the highway. Cons- uh, compiling a bunch of information that I've gathered up, uh, one that we're all made out of the same stuff, the same stuff that's in the table in front of you is the same stuff that's in you. And yes, when you it's get called the- mind stuff, God's mind stuff, his yeah. dream. The, uh, when you get to the quantum physics level, the, uh, the, the foam or the electron cloud around the nucleus, it's all made out of the same stuff. It all depends on how many electron stuff has going around it. And it it dawned on me that what if it is made out of sound? God spoke the sure. universe into sure. existence. That boy, have you hit the nail on the head? There is no big bang. He first he was sitting up there twirling his thumbs. Nothing going on. I don't know for how many ages. And the the the, the very existence of all creation is in the first verse of the first book of the first by uh, of the Bible. Yeah, and and he thought, and then he Im- imagined, and then he created us from imagine into strong envisioning, until he got it right. In, in, instead of making the woman's boobs on the back, which would have made him fun to dance with, but not <laughs> worth worth looking at, uh, uh, he put them on the front. He took uh, his time. Uh, he got it right, and then he yeah. listened. Well, then a- he said, he audibly <laughs> spoke. Sir, there's no Big Bang. It is yeah. just vibration. The, and yeah, Mr. Red Elk, the, the other place I found that in the text was where, I don't know, Jesus and the disciples going off to this town. They said, make these people be quiet lest we get thrown in jail or get in trouble. Yeah, and the law should shout. And he, yeah, and he said, if I'd make these people be quiet, Father would make these stones rejoice. Well, that mm. suggests that there's sound on the inside of those stones. And intelligence. Yeah, in intelligence, and uh, you were speaking about uh, y'all were talking about talking to rocks earlier, and our, and having the rocks talk back. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of us talk to you know whenever you like Art was mad at his car, or you part of the half of the communication you talk to something, but the other half is listening to what it has to say. Now, <laughs> Lord, can I inject here, sir? When, yes, sir. When your wife and you head off for the trip. She thinks, oh, my gosh, did I leave food for the dog? Did I water the plants? And, well, let's go back, you know. And you run back, and lo and behold, the dog's got no food. Yep. The plants need watering. And they say, thank God, I remember that. No, sir. They were called by the plants and by the dog saying, you've forgotten us. <laughs> right, right. There was a uh, something the last caller touched on in imagination, and you touched on it earlier in the conversation. And there's the imagination is a very power, there's a very powerful law tucked away in uh, oh it's right at the Tower of Babel over there. Uh, God said, "Now nothing that they have imagined will be restrained from them." And it says, ye are as little g, gods. 
We cannot be God, but we can be godly. We cannot be Satan, but we can be satanic. We cannot yeah. be Christ, but we can be Christ-like. And if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. Yeah. And we in medicine do this. We have learned to work the dream. I, I would really like to learn from you. I'll, I want to look around on the website when I get time to find out... <laughs> Get in touch. Hey, I'm I'm raising all kinds. Of, I, I'm getting as controversial as Mr. Bell. <laughs> yeah, this this uh, this man is uh, is really something in the color. Yeah, yeah, he he is really good. There's a lot of truth in what he has to say. I appreciate yeah. your call, sir. Thank you. Drive uh, careful, friend. Take care. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Red Elk. Hello, Marcus from Kansas City. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, it's a pleasure to be on tonight. Uh, the more I listen to you, I have to thank you, sir, uh, Mr. Elk for speaking the word to us tonight, and I love you for that, uh, the scriptures. And I'd like to ask you a question concerning the Christ, the Lord. I've chosen not to use the name Jesus, because I've done some research, and it just seems like to me it's wrong. It really, really wasn't his earthly name, and I wonder uh, if you, uh, and I've noticed you haven't used that name either. I was wondering sure, if... It, it doesn't matter. Jesus, doesn't matter. Jesus, the Christ, whatever you want to call him. That man was the walking example of what love can do. Well, who can argue so with that call him love? as a Christian? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's pretty awesome, and you're an exciting man. And also, I'd like to touch on, uh, I, I see in, in the world today how things are, seem to be backwards. They call good evil and evil good. Oh, yeah. And the anxiety for me is very high. And you seem to have much more peace than I do, that's for sure. Can, can you uh, give me any... Uh, Hint, how to get there? Yeah, it, yeah, there, it, see, a little, nothing, little hint or some, right, some help information for me, please. See, nothing as accidents. There are no accidents. It's all planned. See, nothing, nothing as bad. Even your baby getting raped and ripped, and that's bad. But in the long run, it brings people... It, it it gets rid of the shaft in the wheat, and it brings some of that, that real, real weak, weak wheat up standing tall. In the long run, there's a reason for everything. Yep, that's Look, a very hard concept for a lot of people I, to understand. And it would be I for me, that, too, but really... I live by it. I've learned by it. Well, thank you very much. Okay, my friend. All right, take care. Yes, I actually, I, I believe... Uh, Every word you're saying, I believe that you absolutely believe every word you're saying, and I think a lot of what you're saying has an absolute ring of truth to those who have stuck around and listened. Uh, it's really interesting. West of the Rockies, uh, not a lot of time. You're on the air with Red Elk. Hello. Yeah, I'm Walter from Mount Rainier. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to say uh, the mirror, I'd like to ask him about the mirror. I, I've been using it for about 10 years, and I can prove the existence of God with it, real short and sweet. With a mirror? Yeah, I, I was studying guitar in the mirror about 10 years ago, and, I, and uh, I was looking off to the side of the mirror as I was doing it, and uh, I started seeing really weird... Uh, evil type things coming in well i'll tell you we're headed for one whale of a show on this subject uh, but anyway the ribbon does twist and turn creating rips and thinness in the veils that are really all around us but but i i asked god to come in the spirit of god to come in because i couldn't get rid of the the evil looking things in the mirror and and uh everything changed and believe me, Art, you've been wondering about the mirror. Yes. If you, if you sit there and look off to the side and say Satan come in, you're you're not. It'll it'll shock you. It'll scare you almost to death. And I you won't know how to get rid of it other than by saying, "Okay, Spirit of God, come in." And I, that's when everything changes. Yeah. And um, it it'll teach you. I mean, you don't even have to do anything. You can meditate there and feel safe, and you'll start learning things that you've never ever learned before. Now I hear you. Uh, uh, I, and and I've been seeing spaceships from it. I've been learning stuff from God. And one thing about um, I wanted to say uh, that I've been learning from God was um, you have the thing on about Fatima on there, the the secrets. Third well, secret this isn't of a, this isn't about the secrets. This is about the solar event. And God is very disturbed that the, the sun bounced up and down. It's on film. It's on. It's on. Uh, 
motion picture film. Sir, I'm awfully short on time here. Yeah, we got only about you, okay. a minute. Okay. You you want to you want to email me and I will uh, proceed to uh, follow up on it. Um, uh, there are solar events going on right now. We have this big full halo ejection. It's uh, on actually hitting Earth right now. And uh, we've got a gigantic solar storm going on. Auroras may be seen. Red Elk, boy, what a pleasure to have you on the air again. You're a strange sort, Red Elk, but, uh, you know, there's... there's... Stick, uh, stick around and I will give you that thing. Uh, you, indeed. Uh, I just wanted to tell you, you're, you're strange, but you're uh, absolutely intriguing. I mean, there's uh, something about you. So I'm sure, I'm certain we will have you on again. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to put you on hold and uh, talk to you after the show, okay? Uh, yes, love to all and all love, please. Good night, Red Elk. Good night, my brother. Okay, folks, that's it for tonight. And I know that some of you, a, a good portion actually, heard and understood what you heard. Others rejected it entirely, but that's the way the world goes. From the high desert, I'm Art Bell. Good night. Good night.